The Tom Woods Show, episode 1829. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hi, everybody. Tom Woods here. Glad to be joined once again by Carla Garrick of the Free State Project. And we're going to check in with her about what's going on in New Hampshire. And some of you may not know the Free State Project. I want you to know about them. And even if you aren't able to move to New Hampshire, at the very least, you might get some ideas, some light bulbs might turn on in your head from what you hear from Carla about things you might do in your area, not only to promote the cause, but also just to reach out to other people who are of like mind and show them that they're not alone and have, well, let's call it fellowship together. Carla, welcome back. Thanks so much for having me, Tom. I'm delighted to be here as always. I'm told there are some interesting things cooking in the free state, so we definitely want to get updated from you about what's going on up there. But let's start with a little background because, you know, probably my my longtime listeners are getting bored of hearing me say this, but over the course of 2020, I've attracted a lot of new listeners, in large part because people have been following my commentary on the virus and the lockdowns and the government response and all that. So I have a lot of new folks for whom all this stuff is new. And I can't assume, of course, everybody knows what the Free State Project is. They don't necessarily, but they're going to be happy to know about it. So why don't you tell them? Sure. So in a nutshell, Liberty lives in New Hampshire. The Free State Project's been around for almost 20 years now. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to concentrate Liberty lovers and small L libertarians in the state of New Hampshire. Thousands of us have moved. We're actually sort of invigorating thousands of people on the ground now. I will say this for COVID, for Liberty people, it is the gift that apparently keeps on giving. And totalitarianism is kind of a growth sector for the Free State Project. So we're looking for people who, you know, want to live their values, who kind of understand what's happening in the world, both from a socioeconomic and just a lifestyle living perspective, and who value liberty and want to live within a community of like-minded people. We've been around for a while. The original way it worked is people had to sign a pledge. This was like pre-internet, you know, so it was kind of a slug originally to get people to sign up. We're doing away with all of that. We're basically just saying New Hampshire is the libertarian liberty destination. If you're serious about this and if you think things are heading in the wrong direction, let's bandy together, let's concentrate in one state, and let's build it from the ground up. So that's basically what we're doing. Five years ago, we triggered the move. All that means is that's when we got 20,000 people to sign the original pledge. Of those 20,000, you know, we have about five, 6,000 who have moved or who identify as free staters. I'm at the stage, I'm like, I don't think the numbers are important. And in fact, we've seen it's not important. What's important is getting activists and the right kind of people who actually want to help build a free state. So that's what we're about. You know, we had Edward Snowden five years ago. You've spoken at Liberty Forum. You've spoken at Forkfest. You were our keynote last year at Forkfest. So those are sort of our events where we showcase what the community is up to. And so we're talking this week, of course, because it's Porcupine Day, which I think will probably have been yesterday. So it'll be the third, right? Is our big day that we said, okay, everyone, move to New Hampshire. So here we are. We're celebrating that over the weekend. Uh, We'll be showing. It's a sold out event. So, you know, no one buy tickets. You can't. (laughs) We're past that stage. But we'll be showing uh, Thomas Sell, of course, the great economist, has a new movie out. So we'll be showing that, having dinner and then having a fun little after party after that. Well, that's all tremendous. As I said, I've I've been to Pork Fest. That was my first time last year ever. After people, people, I'm telling you, man, people have been on my case for years to come to Pork Fest. And I just, ah, it doesn't seem like it's my thing. Well, it was my thing. It was just, it was a tremendous time. And uh, if you've been thinking for whatever reason that maybe it's not your kind of thing, I'm telling you, there's something for everybody there. And if you don't like camping, you don't have to rough it if you don't want to. There are places you can stay. And I stayed at that one, not the local motel, but the one, the mountain, I forget what it was called. The Grand it was Mountain about, View, the fancy one? Yes. 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 
the fancy one. <laughs> That's where I stayed. <laughs> so I I was I was clean and showered and soaped up every day and and had a comfy bed. So if you're like, I mean, I used to go camping when I was a kid, but for me, that those days are just over. And if my kids ever say they want to go camping, they can go with their friends, but not with their old man. But it doesn't matter because that's that's what I mean. That there's something for everybody. If that's what you like, you can do that. If you don't, you don't have to. But it was I got to meet some people who became instant friends. I saw people I hadn't seen in years mm-hmm. who were there, and and then people I was just meeting at, at random were all well wishers. There was there was no there were no nasty people. It was all just nice, chill, good folks. So I guess it's June twenty first through the twenty seventh this year. Yes, it'll be that weekend. It's our traditional third week in June, and uh, I'm super excited. You know, last year with Pork Fest, and it was great to have you up here because I think you know you and I see very much eye to eye on what's been happening for twenty twenty and and what's going on, and so it's always great to just get the right minds and the right energy and the right people together, and that's what we try and do at Pork Fest every year. So June twenty first through the twenty seventh, the tickets are online at pork with a C for porcupine, porcupine freedom festival.com. The tickets, we're keeping them sort of in keeping with what we did last year. They're going to be 30 bucks. We're going for that. Of course, and everyone has to buy their camping or go to the fancy hotel like Tom does. You know, there are motels that are within walking or driving distance. There really is something for everyone. And because like our whole thing is showcasing our community, we're going to have a lot of decentralized talks and little villages on the campground. So there might be like crypto village and there's going to be, say, a lady specific village just to try and encourage some more of the libertarian ladies to start to come out. Um, And, you know, there'll be politics and all of that. And then in the main pavilion, as we've always done over the years, we'll have people like you, Tom, uh, speak, you know, hoping, you know, Jack Spurkle will come, the reason folks, you know, all the usual suspects that we all know and love are generally there. We'll do Soapbox Idol again, where the community gets to get up and rant and let us know what they're on about. So it's going to be great. It's going to be exciting. We were literally the only, I sometimes say the only libertarian event, but I think almost plausibly I can say one of the only events worldwide that went forward as planned last June. I didn't change a single thing other than make it a lot cheaper to try and get folks out. We had a blast. It was a week of just joyous celebration in life because that's really what it's about. You know, we have these naysayers who are like, how dare you go on with your life? And I'm like, what are we waiting for? Like, like what's going to be the magic bullet that makes you think, you know, it's okay now. So we're not irresponsible. We're highly responsible people who believe in personal responsibility and making your own choices. So, you know, we had the bracelets, we said, enter at own risk. Some people wore masks, the majority didn't. And we just went on with life and it was a blast and we plan to do it again. And I'm going to give a huge shout out to everyone listening. Let's make this the biggest pork fest ever. Let's get 2000 people, bring your kids. One of the cool things was, you know, if you talk to the families last year, so many parents came to me and they said, Thank you, thank you, thank you, Carla. My children have had the only normal week for this entire year. And they're just grateful to be out in sunlight with friends, living a healthy, normal life. So porkfest.com and folks should come, come meet the community because we're doing really interesting, exciting, cool things here in New Hampshire. We People don't maybe always see the, the successes, but by way of example, you know, we had an election in, in 2020. <laughs> Remember that thing that happened? <laughs> and uh, while, well, you know, I ran for Senate, I didn't make it, but I got 45% of the vote. And I'm You were very darn outspoken. close. Yeah. yeah I mean, and it looked, you know, during the night, it looked like you might even pull it out. It was really, really close. I know. It became a nail biter towards the end there. <laughs> But, you know, the old guy, he can't live forever, and I'm hopefully fairly well positioned to to try and sweep it up when the time comes. Who knows? You know, I'm not the Republicans' favorite person currently because there's a lot of 
criticism from our part with regard to some of the governor's choices with regard to the emergency powers. So, you know, we have we have free we have so many liberty people in the state house now, Tom. It's mind blowing. The House Majority Leader is a free stater. Uh, we have over a, a I don't know if it's over, I would say close to. We have 100 out of 400 state reps, because of course, New Hampshire has one of the largest legislative bodies in the world, which you know is an advantage for us. It's a lot harder to bribe people when <laughs> there are that many unruly people with opinions. But we have over 100 pro-liberty people in the House. We have three pro-liberty people. We'll have to see how they actually end up voting in the Senate. I criticize Chris Sununu, our governor, frequently, but he is actually, you know, he's a pretty good guy, and I think he does get it. I think for some of these people, they just didn't really know what to do, and so they started to toe the party line. So we're looking at this legislative season at some cool, exciting pro-economic, pro-free market stuff. We're talking about changing the dividends and income tax. Of course, New Hampshire is a low tax state. We don't have a sales tax. We don't have an income tax, but we do have a tax on on earned income, on dividends. So we're trying to reduce that. We're looking at reducing several business taxes. There's a really cool and exciting push with regard to education freedom. I'm sure your listeners, you know, and and you yourself, we're all pro school choice. We're all pro, you know, choices in life in general, because that's how individualism works. So for, I think we might even get it through this time, which would be education savings accounts that have kind of been rebranded as education freedom accounts. And the idea there would be that the money follows the child. Now, when the schools, we've had some hybrid systems here. We've had some schools that haven't opened. They're primarily the public schools. One of the things no one wants to talk about is all the private schools in New Hampshire are open. They have been. There is not spikes. There's no reason. You know, the schools could be open if there was an appetite and if there weren't, you know, the monopolistic teacher unions. So when all of this started, I actually said to myself, what would be a positive that we could get out of this? And looking at the landscape, I said, you know, maybe we will get people who just are shocked at what their kids are learning in school or not learning, and that people will start to make better informed choices. At the time, I said, you know, if 25% of kids don't go back to school when this is said and done, public school, I'm going to count it as a win, regardless of you know other stuff. The last number I heard, at least in Manchester, where I live, which is the biggest city in New Hampshire, 30% drop in public school enrollment. And they think it's permanent. They're actually talking about closing schools. So if we can get this education freedom account program through, which would say X amount, I'm not sure what the final number would be. Let's say it's between three and $5,000 per child can be spent by the parents on what they think the best educational choices for their individual child who all learn differently is, you know, I'm going to take it as, as, as I got to find a positive and a little, you know, silver lining on 2020. And I'm going to say that's it. If we break the school's monopoly on the brains of the young kids, maybe some good can come out of this. All right. Before I forget, let me interrupt myself here and tell you about a podcast I came across that I think you need to hear. And it's by our friend David Garnoski, who's been a guest on this program. He's been at one of my house events. You're definitely going to like it. It's called A Neighbor's Choice. And it's been called An Apocalyptic Mr. Rogers for Adults. And one of his consistent themes on A Neighbor's Choice is that politics is a scapegoating ritual rooted in human sacrifice. So how's that for getting your attention? He talks to... All kinds of people you find interesting, like I do, like Ron Paul, Peter Schiff, and Jeff Dice of the Mises Institute. But he also talks to people on cultural issues like Jordan Peterson, Scott Adams. So it definitely stands out from other libertarian podcasts. But also in another way, the show features call-in interviews with prisoners who are serving life sentences for nonviolent crimes. And so you get a sense of what life is like 
for those people. And plus, each week, he features solutions from scientists on the cutting edge of market innovations in areas like energy, nutrition, and medicine that involve thinking in fresh and exciting new ways. So from newsmakers to innovators, David brings his neighbors on a mind-blowing journey. So check out the show by subscribing to David Gornoski on Apple Podcasts. Gornoski is G-O-R-N-O-S-K-I, just the way it sounds, David Gornoski. Or you can visit his website, a neighbor's Choice. Dot com. He's on YouTube, youtube.com slash David Gornoski, G-O-R-N-O-S-K-I. But you can find all these things at the website, a neighborschoice.com. I want to ask you about a strange book that came out that I saw some months ago. And it has to do with Grafton, which I didn't even know. I mean, I guess I knew it existed but the book is called A Libertarian Walks Into a Bear, The Utopian Plot to Liberate an American Town, parentheses, and some bears. <laughs> Did this have any connection with the Free State Project? And what was that all about? So, I mean, it tangentially has something to do with us in the sense that the Free Town Project was almost a precursor of the Free State Project. They kind of came about the same time, but it predates me a little bit. So my, you know, I've listened to half the audio book and then, you know, being, you know, I was like, oh, am I mentioned? Can I search here? Where's my name? And how much of a, you know, how much crap am I in the crap sandwich, so to speak? Um, So the impression I got from what I've read, I've read some reviews of the book. uh, We've gotten contacted, you know, by Hollywood and those kinds of people because they've read the book. So whenever they attack us, it's actually has a positive effect on our lives. The impression I got from the book is that one, the guy was writing two books. He wrote a book about bears and then he found out about the free Grafton project and then sort of decided to merge it into a, I mean, it's a 14 hour audio book. So it's merged into this sort of awkward thing that's half about a free town project, which was let's bring libertarians to the town of Grafton and let's try and reduce the size and scope of government. And then this weird tie in with just wild bears in New Hampshire and the proliferation of bears. And somehow those two things tie together because, I don't know, the, the, the town gets overrun by bears because libertarianism. Who knows? You know, I, it's not a, as much of a hit piece as, you know, I've certainly seen over the years from our real enemies, uh, you know, the enemies of liberty. But honestly, Tom, I'm at the stage, I've been doing this so long, you know, I was like, well, I got called a domestic terrorist in 2013 for the first time. You know, I got deplatformed with this whole insurrection nonsense and all of that because I shared one photo. So my thing is when they attack us, one, it's an opportunity for us. And two, it's a tell on their part, right? Like a poker tell in the sense that they either think people are making inroads or our arguments are starting to resonate with people, and now they have to come after us. And certainly for me, maybe two, three weeks ago, it almost seemed like it was an article that was primed for SEO just for search. And uh, it was an attack on Chris Sununu, but by way of the company he keeps, including, of course, me. And this was a, I want to say it was maybe like an 800, 900 word essay in the Concord Monitor. And I went and counted because I was just like, wow, this seems like as hit pieces go, you know, this one seems a little special, like it was almost placed there, you know, for when the feds start to search for people or they're looking for certain names with certain phrases and that kind of stuff, which we do know is happening, right? So in an 800 word article, this woman used the word armed 10 times, militia, eight times, violence, five times, extremism, five times, anti-government, four times, white supremacist, guns, intimidation, three times each, white nationalism, twice, and harassment, once. Now, the reason I even bring that up is when the enemies of liberty come out, you know, and, and, and they're coming at me and calling me a white nationalist, a white supremacist, I'm originally from South Africa. I was an anti-apartheid 
activist. You know, I voted for Nelson Mandela. At the time, I didn't understand economics, you know, so don't, don't hold it too hard against me. But when you see us getting attacked for things that are like not even plausible or not even on the face of it, true, I take great pleasure out of that because I'm like, well, you don't get me at all, which means I probably <laughs> will be able to persuade more people that, of course, self-ownership is important and that, you know what, radical acceptance is important. If you don't like what someone's doing, say wear a mask or not wear a mask, it's none of your business if you understand self-ownership. So they're coming at us. I think it's a good sign. So I'm I, I'm like, let's bring it on. Let's see if we can get more people to move here. Let's wake more people up, not in a woke sense, in a good sense of freedom, principles, liberty. So yeah, don't spend money on the book. Apparently tonight, they're having a Zoom at one of the libraries with the author of the book. So we have our new movers party on the first Tuesday of the month. So it's tonight. And I thought maybe we'll put the Zoom up and this guy can, you know, face, I don't know, 100, 120 free staters who are just there to talk along with his book. So we'll see. Good for you guys. Good for you guys. Well, let me just say one thing about uh, about being attacked. Now, in your case, it's not New Hampshire that's being attacked. It's the Free State Project. But in my case, my whole state's being attacked, Florida, because you know we haven't really shut down, or at least we when we did shut down, we reopened. And you know, I, I've gone. I went to see Rob Schneider, the comedian, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was great. By the way, his whole routine was against the lockdowns and the hysteria on the virus, or at least two thirds of it. And it was absolutely great. He, he couldn't have been better. So I did that. I've got concert tickets uh, for the next couple of months. I mean, it's just it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's not entirely normal, but it's pretty close compared to anywhere else. So the other day I was on Twitter and somebody, I don't know, some people had gotten into an argument about whether Florida was doing the right thing. And one person said, I don't know what all you people are cheering for Florida for. I mean, its results look pretty average. And so I jumped in and said, listen, when Florida reopened fully in September, I can assure you that people like you were not screaming at us the following sentence. Hey, if you reopen, your results are going to be very average. <laughs> Carla, that is not what they were saying. They were not warning us that we'd be very average. They were warning us of the apocalypse. Right. So to, for them to concede that actually, even though we have among the oldest populations in the country – and we've been completely open with no occupancy restrictions, we're still very average, I say that's an incredible concession on their part. I fully agree. And of course, we know. I don't know if you've been following, I think his name is Ivor Cummings. Uh, oh, I had him on the show. He is so great. So I'm going to see, I, I, I want to see if we can get him out for Porkfest. I'm not sure what that would look like. Maybe find a sponsor for him or something. But I would love to bring him because... You know, even here in New Hampshire, my husband, actually, Louis, he did a blog post where he took all the health data from the state of New Hampshire, so their own data, and plotted it out. And here in New Hampshire, which does very similar to Florida, have a very aging population, we have not seen an old cause mortality rate above the trend line that has been trending up over five years, which is because our population is, is older. But there is, on the face of it, no emergency. There is no higher death rate here than you would expect to see in a normal year. And in fact, you know, 2002 and some other years are vastly 30 percent higher outliers, of course, at those you know, times no one was saying we should crash the world economy because, you know, someone has the sniffles. And of course, so, so on the one hand, we have these emergency restrictions, right? But the bigger question and the bigger issue is, even if there is an emergency, does a governor, uh, you know, have the right to suspend the U.S. and New Hampshire constitutions? And of course not. So one of the cool things we are seeing with all these people who've gone to the state house and all of that is uh, there are a ton of bills in to try and restrict 
uh, the emergency powers to sort of figure out what that should look like going forward, because I'm sure you and I are on the same page in the sense that, you know, they don't like letting a crisis go to waste. Now they've decided we'll just manufacture crises out of whole cloth, you know, or we'll just make a small thing, much, much, much bigger thing. And so I do think we have to push back on this notion that under the right circumstances, we can restrict your rights in a way that I at least am not willing to concede. And the more they come and the more they start to say, you're not allowed to say these things, you're not allowed to think these things, I think they're making a mistake because more people are waking up because People are living through this themselves. I mean, I see it with a lot of, I would say, like moderate Democrats even that I know, you know, people who are like, why can't my kids go back to school? You know, they don't realize they shouldn't send their kids to the school, but at a minimum, they're questioning why they can't be in school. So again, you know, I see all of this as an opportunity, but that being said, I also am nervous that, you know, if we look down this pipe, you know, that we a totalitarianism, you know, COVID-1984 and and the future, that it does behoove us, at least those of us who can, to come to New Hampshire because our community has just been amazing through all of this. You know, we've just continued with our lives. People have meetups. We do all the usual things. Well, yeah, in fact, as a matter of fact, can we lead into that, into maybe, can you paint for us a picture of what the typical month in the life of a free stater would look like? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we have all these regular events, right? So I mentioned new movers. We do that once a month where we welcome whoever's moved that month in. It's typically an event where we have 100 to 120 people. We actually now have, we have three permanent uh, community centers and we have two more that are happening. This is not something the Free State Project does. This is something that free staters do, right? So they'll open up a community or social center. There are two on the free coast, the ones, um, the Praxium, and then there's the Shell or the Swell. Um, There's one in Manchester, the Quill. Uh, You can hear there's a bit of a porcupine theme over here. Uh, There's one opening in the Lakes region, and then there's one we're looking at in the Upper Valley near the Bardo Farm as well. So these would just be, you know, places people can gather. We have classes there. People do everything from, you know, Wim Hof breathing exercises and some cold therapy now that it's winter to yoga classes, to martial arts, to little craft classes for the kids. There's a huge homeschooling community. So those people tend to do, you know, outings where they're like, let's all go to the ice castles, you know, and, uh, you know, 40 families from across the state will all meet at, you know, what, whatever museum it is or whatever fun outing it is. So there's, there's that. There's, of course, now that we're in legislative session, we have uh, all these organizations that were also started by free staters uh, and, and locals who also love liberty because, right, this is the live free or die state, although I like to say live free and thrive state, you know, the die doesn't play so well during a pandemic. <laughs> So, um, you know, so there are meetups, there's crypto, there's all the different interests. By way of example, I think in the past month, they actually have started doing the Soho Forum debates are being live streamed at some of our community centers. And it's just, you know, your life is just filled with, with liberty and people and you know, if someone car, if someone's car breaks down, you know, we have signal and telegram groups where we can all talk to each other. If someone gets arrested, like there have been these fairly contentious protests at the governor's actual house because he closed down the state house. So uh, in some people's wisdom, I personally was not down with it because the optics don't play well and the media hates it, right? That's where the people start to say, well, now you're going to someone's house, right? 
but people will go and they'll protest there on Sundays with a bullhorn. So, you know, there, there's the civil disobedience sort of outside, there's the politics, and then there's the business. And a lot of us are investing in real estate. Um, I certainly think that, you know, if we build and are building and have built what we think is going to be the, the original free state, uh, possibly even soft independence, but at a minimum, a lot of nullification, then long term, you know, it makes sense to invest in New Hampshire. Maybe even if you can't move, you know, donate, form a consortium, buy some buildings. It's still cheap enough. And I think long term, this state is just going to become some kind of little economic engine. So the day in the life is. Of course, ultimately, whatever each individual makes of it. This morning, by way of example, you know, I signed in on some bills. I will record my Manch Talk show. I will then sit in on some hearings. Tonight, we have a new movers party. And then to, uh, and that library thing with the book. And that's just one random Tuesday. So it's a life living in principle in liberty. And I invite everyone who thinks, you know, if you think things are not heading in the right direction, they're not. And there's a solution. And that solution is in New Hampshire with the Free State Project. So the short pitch is move to New Hampshire and come do something for liberty. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, I endorse that message completely. What's the website? So it's fsp.org uh, is where you can find all the information. There's porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com, where the tickets are on sale. My personal site is carlagarrick.com. I try and blog regularly at least two or three times a week. Uh, just on local issues, you know, I serve on a lot of nonprofits. I do a lot of work in open government and government transparency and police accountability. And those issues are all coming to a head in a really interesting way here. Um, and if, if you'll let me, I'm going to give a little plug for my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist which is available on Amazon and on my website. And the reason I bring it up is it's a collection of short stories and essays and speeches and, you know, some of my blogs from from all the years. But on page 209, there's a speech that I gave five years ago uh, called Triggered. And that was when we triggered the move with Edward Snowden. And, you know, we it's a great little thing. And I talk about how, you know, Some people, you know, it's not going to be their cup of tea. Um, Not everyone wants to live their principles. And some people just want to sit around and complain. But some people are seeking solutions and they want to do something. And if you're action driven and you want to build something and you want to get in fairly early and seize opportunities, move to New Hampshire, come join us. And, you know, let's let's build what I call the Yankee Hong Kong, you know, the Silicon Mill Yard, whatever name we want to give it. Let's build a free state so that we can show people these ideas work. Right. They're going to clamp down on us because the problem with freedom is you can't have one place that's an outlier that looks great, that is more prosperous, more peaceful and just better than everywhere else. That's the scourge of socialism. But I want to <laughs> I want to be the opposite. I want to show people that there is a Mecca, there is a beacon, there is a place, and we can do it. We just need more people. All right. Well, check it out. I'll, I'll link to the site also at tomwoods.com slash 1829, the show notes page. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again this June, Carla. Thanks so much. I'm so excited. That's wonderful. Thank you, Tom. All right, folks, that's it for today. But tomorrow, make sure you tune in because I've got Mark Skousen of Freedom Fest coming back. And we're going to talk about a couple of things. One of them is the 150th anniversary of the release of Carl Menger's Principles of Economics, which is the book that kicked off the Austrian School of Economics. And that's an important book. We'll put it in context and talk about it. But then we also want to talk about some upcoming events this year that you're going to want to hear about. One of them is the event that Mark and I are doing together in San Juan Capistrano in California. And you're going to want to be there. Let's just put it that way. You're going to want to be there. I'll give you the details and the link 
in the episode. Now, if you're on my mailing list, you already know that you already have the link. You've already registered for the event. So get on my mailing list if you're not on it already. There are a lot of ways to do that. Maybe a, a good way these days to do it would be to go to aocisrong.com and get my ebook, AOC is Wrong. I mean, how could that how could that ebook be bad? Come on, right? So go get that. And in addition to getting that ebook, you get on my list and you find out about things like this. So anyway, that's tomorrow. I'll see you then. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit tomwoods.com to subscribe to the show for free and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.